I'm gonna put this down. Alright. Hi, book two. Welcome to Jackie's Lunar Corner. I am Jackie, and I'm losing my books. My stack. Sorry. And there it goes. Okay. Um, give me a second, you guys. I have a lot of books here. Um, okay. Let's put these down. Okay. Alright. all that hard work and it probably won't be the thumbnail because I still can't figure out how to do thumbnails okay so so this Sunday's topic for seven on Sunday was longer book series you would recommend and I bring only something when I was trying to think of my answers that any of my answers technically can't really count I mean, it's not like anyone's modern, modern, t modern me, to be fair, but I feel like I can't really, it was, I still feel like, I feel like, okay, I can't really count those because what if someone that I recommended that series to ends up not liking it, and then, and yeah, there wouldn't be anything wrong with that necessarily, even if I loved and you didn't, but the problem is, all these series, these longer series, most of the longer series so far that I'm reading, I'm reading, as in I have not read, I have not finished them. This is not, a, all these series, none of these series, well except for one, are not rewrites. And even the one that is a rewrite, I didn't even finish, I only read the first three books. And I barely remember, I mean that's why I'm rereading it. So, I feel like I can't do the recommendations, I can't really recommend them, but I can talk about books that longer series that I'm excited about that I'm currently reading that I'm really enjoying and that I want to keep going I want to finish them and that I'm just really um basically series that I'm reading that I'm excited to read and that I want to continue with so it's technically not a seven on Sunday because it's actually more than seven but it's kind of the same topic Okay, so the first one is, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the one that's a reread that I only read the first three books, and that is the Dark Tower series. And I've talked about this before. In fact, the next Sunday's topic, it will be in that cat. It will be on, it will be one of those seven. But this is basically a story about this guy a, who's a gunslinger named Roland of Gilead. His world has moved on. Um, like, think like John Wayne in the post-apocalyptic, like, John Wayne in a post-apocalyptic world. I cannot say that word. Um, post-apocalyptic world. And he ends up, he's following um, the man in black to the tower, to this dark tower. And, um, along the way, he ends up crossing the path into our world where he, because of these companions, and they all go on Roland's quest and become part of his quest, his quartet. Um, there's seven books, and I am on book three right now. I, like I said, I read the first three books, and I barely remember them. And at the time, I didn't like them. I think I was kind of just getting into Stephen King and getting into his darker stories and longer works. And um, I think at the time, I just don't. It wasn't my thing at the time, but now I've matured as a reader. I've changed. Readers change. People don't always stick to the same types of books um, that they love. And I definitely liked it a lot better this time around, years later. And I remember loving the third book, so I'm going to reread. Oh, oh, I totally forgot. I never did. I didn't, did not show you. So this is the third book. The Wastelands, and one of the only thing I remember is this guy, Blaine the Train. He's kind of like a golem type where he loves riddles and he's creepy and he acts like a spoiled child. I mean, basically, that he's like a child. So when I thought about this, I thought about a mixture of golem meets Thomas the Tank Engine. That's what, when I, when I think of Blaine, that's what I think of. I couldn't remember his name until I, I looked it up and then read through the book, read a little, looked 
a little bit of the book and read a little bit of it and was like, oh yeah, that's his name, Blaine. Although that's not as generic of a boy name as I thought. You know, um, because it's the name of a Ken doll that I used to have. Um, and he's supposed to be really cool and, you know, typical 90s look. 90s, early 2000s look. See, he kind of looked like Protozoa from, um, Xenon, the girl of the 21st century. The rock star that she has a big crush on. Um, but, anyway. So, that's, I'm excited to continue to read this, especially because this one was my favorite. And then next, of course, the classic epic fantasy series. I finally read the second book this past year. Um, I wanted to read it before the series started. They did a series on Amazon. And that is the Wheel of Time series. And, the, um, and they recommended reading, watching, reading the first two books before watching the show. So I wanted to do it. So I was able to, before the show started, I read the second book. And now I can read book three before the new se before season two. Book three being the Dragon Reborn. Um, and yeah, it's like, there's, you know, it's a little bit older. Like, I feel like it's kind of, it comes off as the traditional, like, kind of the, um, the, what's the word? The, um, the crossover book between... The traditional fantasy to more modern fantasy. That's what I feel like. It's a transition series into more modern. Like, it, it still has some, a lot of traditional elements. But it tries to do something new and different. That's what, like, because, I mean, in fact, this was a compliment to Lord of the Rings, the first book. But then the second book does a totally different thing. And I think that's a lot of people that are annoyed, do not like this one of the reasons, not all of the reasons, but one of the one of the things that holds people back from enjoying this, I think, is because of, oh, it's just he's trying to be Tolkien. Now, granted, I could be wrong here, but from you know people that have more knowledge than I do, have said you know have implied that's part of the reason, not the only reason, but and I've also read reviews and stuff, as well for book one, and they're all like, oh, it's just he's trying too hard to be Tolkien. To be token like and um you and my dad was feeling like when because they they surprisingly finally watched the series on amazon of course they didn't compare it to lord of the rings they actually compared it to game of thrones um which i can see the resemblance but i think a lot of shows are trying to be the next game of thrones i don't think it's necessarily that it's a similar story to it i think it's just trying to be as Epic as as Game of Thrones was, but anyway, so I will read this this year, and it's a little bit shorter, you know. The it's like I feel like book two was the Great Hunt was a little bit longer than book three than this one, so I was surprised. It, like it looked shorter, but this could also be just how the book was printed. Um, but anyway, so there is that. Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan and later on by Bran Brando Sandal. Sando. Brand San aka Brandon Sanderson. Um and speaking of him, the next one I want to talk about is Stormlight Archives. So, um, this is a series that I had I keep stopping and starting this. And it's not that I don't wanna it's not that I'm forcing myself. It's just, it's a big commitment. It's a long book. And originally I had the mass market copy, but then my excuse was, oh, I want to get a, um, this size copy of it, a trade paperback. So I finally got it, and honestly, I'm enjoying it, because look how far I've gotten. I, I do enjoy it, believe I love, I love this, you know. But it's over, it's pretty long, and it's a big commitment, so, um... Like, it's almost in the thousand page mark, but it's, it's like 1,001 pages. The line ends there, and then it has the end note section. So, it requires a big commitment, and I'm just, I'm constantly distracted by other books. 
I need to one day just pick up a book and commit to it. It's just hard because I'm like thinking, oh, but I want to read this one too. And I want to read this one. And then I got this a thousand page book as well. And, um, and, oh, my mom got me that one. So I want to prove to her that I'm reading the, I'm reading the books that she buys me. And, um, but anyway, so this, I want to finally finish this first book so I can get to the second one. And like, you know, it's going to be, I don't want it to be another situation with, like, with Count of Monte Cristo where it was years later. It wasn't until years later that I actually finished the book. And I was anticipating the fact that it would be so weird, like, once I was finished with it. Because I'm with it for so long and all of a sudden, I guess it's kind of like how you're in a... It's kind of like you're in a relationship you've been with so long, but you, you have been, like, although I guess maybe this is a bad metaphor because this is, like, or, well, no, here's a good way to put it. Like, you're in, it's like you're, it's the kind of situation where you're in for, with a relationship where the person is really good to you, but then you take them for granted, and then one day you are about to lose them. And you realize, I've taken this per this person for granted, and I actually really do love them. And it's kind of like that with me and books, where I I do enjoy the books, but I take them for granted that they're always going to be, that, you know, one day they're going to be, so, that they're always going to be there. Or that, you know, one, you know, or that, I mean, it's kind of a weak metaphor, but it's a little, it's a, it's, like that. I, I don't know. Because it's not like they're going to go away or anything, but I, I'm, I'm trying to sound clever here and make up some metaphor, that some clever metaphor to explain it. But, um, so I want to get to this one. Um, well, I guess a good way, another way is like, basically it's, they're, they're going to be once they're going to, someone else is going to get to it before you do. And someone's gonna make it before pop. Someone else is gonna get to it. I just like took it for granted. That not, it's always gonna be special. It's always gonna be my book. But then one day someone else is gonna discover. It. Although in the case of this one, it's it's already popular. So the series. But sorry, I'm just I'm trying. Like I said, I'm trying to come up with a clever metaphor, and it, it's just good. Just not doing good. Okay. So yeah. So Way of Kings, Stormlight Archives. Okay, and then we have one of my historical fictions. I have a couple of historical fictions on here. Um, so, then, and that is, what is it? The Kingsbridge series by Ken Follett. So, this is a series I've had since we first moved here. Um... And he's, the other one, like, you have his trilogy, the Century Trilogy, and then you have the Kingsbridge. In fact, Column of Fires then was the latest book he wrote. Well, actually, no, not the latest. I feel like that because I think the latest book he's published was the latest book in this series. I have to double check on that. But, um, so as of right now, I think this is a series, an ongoing series. And I want to catch up with it. Um, and most people, you know, it's one of those books where they give you the basic premise and they're like, well, you have to read it to really understand what it's about, to really get the full scope of it. Um, but it's this guy who's this master builder who his family is very not doing with, this is his job, building things. And right now he's just building this church for a, for a marriage a prince's marriage but then she the woman doesn't want to marry the guy so he loses his job because um her fiance her former fiance is like oh we don't need a church anymore so you're fired so he takes his wife and his two young children and um his wife is pregnant to find somewhere else to find to find work and no one is offering work either. They already have enough employees or there's no work to be had. And, you know, in the background is this building of the, this famous cathedral. And there's all this political and religious 
intrigue going on, religious turmoil, and um, who's running the church. I mean, who's running things, the church, or the, you know, the king, and that kind of stuff. And there is a little, there is a romance, and, um, I've gone pretty far. I'm, like, almost to page 240, 240. So, I'm past the 100 mark, and I'm in, I've been in the 200 marks. And, again, there's a situation where it's pretty long. It's, like, I want to commit to it, but then I keep thinking of all the other guns I want to commit to. Um... And so, what I need to, what I think I should try to do is at least read a hundred more pages of each of these, of these books, or 200 pages, or whatever, how many pages, and then I can put it down the other and come back to it. Like, just do it kind of slowly, slowly ease my way into reading these over 500 plus page books. But it's just, it's so far, I do like I said, I do like it, and it's very interesting, and although the little bit of the whole, you know, the master builder falling in love with this other woman, and I, although it's probably, like, that is a little, I, you know, that all him falling, well, his wife is still, like, there's, he becomes infatuated with this woman, and then he ends up marrying her and his wife has died not that long after and he realized oh i'm in love with this other woman so it's okay if i get together with her and they're already having problems because you know they're both not the best parents they both have parental issues you know parental issues they're both there's not a good balance in how they parent their kids but yeah, that, that part is a little bit, there, but there's probably a reason for it. And it's probably not because, you know, Ken Fold thinks this is okay. He's probably trying to make a point with this. And who knows how their, their relationship is going to turn out. And, you know, it, it's all about good stories, writing a good story. And a story that makes sense. And there's a reason, you know. So, so there is that one. This is the first book in the series. And then we have... Another, well, not historical necessarily, like, not historical as in it was written recently, and it's about the past. It's actually a classic, so it was written a long time ago. So at the time it was written, it would have been in contemporary. Um, which is really weird to think about. Because, like, you know, what, like, technically for us, a lot of classics would be historical, so you classify it as historical fiction, but it's not actually historical fiction. Because when it was written, it would have been contemporary. So it's, and I think it's almost easier just to call these books, label them as classics. Um, but this is the Bar Setcher Sire, Shire series by Anthony Trollope. And this is book, um, I think... Four, I think. Um, yeah, because I think Doctor Thorne was book three, and um, I'm really enjoying. It, but it is a slow movie. It's about the domestic life of the people in this village of Barsetshire, and they're going on in the dramas. So it's a little different than a lot of the series I have here. It's not as exciting or action packed. But it has a lot of drama, and it's kind of cool to see a series set in this, you know, that's not fantasy, that's in kind of this category, because not a lot of, most of these classics, you know, are standalones, unless it's the fantasy, because I'm, you know, unless it's fantasy drawn, the fantasy genre, because, like, I think even, like, um... Jules Verne wrote a series. I think 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The Seas is part of a series, that I want to say. Um, or at least a trilogy. I don't know, but, um... So unless it's fantasy or sci-fi, it's not... They don't... There's not a lot of series. And even then, it's not like this is a continuing arc. It's just these people... The only... The thing that connects them is it's in the same place. And it's all these different people going about their lives and the dramas and you know marriages and religious politics and you know um commentary on society like a lot of classics are 
um, especially great classics. I actually watched a video recently, so, um, that was talking about that. Like, I was watching, I've discovered a new booktuber, um, Tristan in the Classics, and I've been kind of binging his videos, and he did a video where he talked about what is a classic, and he talked about there's a difference between, at least for him, there's a difference between classics and great classics. And for him, there's a criteria of books that he feels are considered classic going by, you know, great, I, um, he, like, he has a criteria for books that are considered great classics and not just classics. And it got me thinking also what today, what books today would be considered great classics to one, you know, a hundred years from now. And I used to say, like, Harry Potter is a classic. And I think it is, a, it will be a classic, but is it a great classic? Now, which I'm sure some of you will debate with, you know, some of you might comment about that, but I don't know if it would be considered a great classic. Because, I mean, I'd have to think about it. Especially going by the, what the stand, the criteria that Tr Tristan gave. I like the name Tristan. I like his name, Tristan. Um... But yeah, so this, I think, is the fourth book in the series. So, and like I said, it's not the most exciting series, you know, not unless you like social drama and political intrigue and stuff like that. Like, it's almost like a, you know, like shows like Gossip Girl or something, you know. Um, but yeah, I can never find this edition. I always try to find these these editions on Goodreads, but I can never find it. So it's kind of hard for me to put the, uh, keep you guys updated on Goodreads, you know, like keep updated on the um, like the number of pages I'm reading because I can never find this edition. Which that's the only problem with having older, much older editions of these classics, because you can't always find them on the internet. Okay. All right. Then you have. Another actual historical, and this is one I recently discovered, and actually I was inspired to, my latest thrift books purchase was, you could say, inspired by this along with um, SPQR by Mary Beard. And that is the Emperor series, The Death of Kings. This is the second book in the series, and again, I don't want my series... My big, one of my goals is to make sure I don't fall behind on my series again. Like, I need to get through, um, at least some of the books in my series. Like, I did make some progress, um, with, I did read Silver, Silverthorn. I haven't read the second one, the last one yet, which is from the Rith War Saga. Although, I just realized that there's a lot more books in that series. Um... And then I read Empire of Robbery, which is book, um, Silverthorn is book three, and then Empire of Ivory is book four in another series. Oh, and then I read, um, Tower Swallows, and I have, um, and, um, one more series I read Across the Green Grass Fields. Which is from the Wayward Children. I listened, or I listened to that one on audiobook. I didn't physically read it. I listened to it, um, but so I'm making progress. But I feel like it's not as noticeable, especially with books this size. But um, this is the story, a fictionalized version of the story of Julius Caesar, and how he eventually becomes um, he becomes the infamous Julius Caesar who got betrayed by his friend and stabbed thirteen times. Um, and this is his origin, like I said, this is a fictionalized version of his origins, and this is the second book, um, he's, and, um, we also have, and a lot of stuff is going on, I'm guessing this book, after having read the, um, the back description of this, so I want to keep going with this. Especially because I'm kind of on a Roman kick. Like I said, it kind of inspired my latest book, books, um, book, the Rift books purchase. I don't know why I couldn't get that out. It was also kind of inspired by, it was also inspired by Steve Donahue because it was a book that he has. And he, rec he recommended it to his viewers 
as a good as a good book to get and as a good book to have on Roman history and so I got it along with a few other along with one other I, I shouldn't have there was I was tempted to get a third book but I decided to just get two so um especially because I'm trying to like I said I'm trying to stick to my budget of 75 a month of, on spending on books Um, but anyway, so I'm eager to pick this up and continue with it. Continue with the series. Okay, so then we have one that the, probably one of the oldest series, but I only had the first book. And then the last couple years, I've been slowly accumulating the books. The only problem is that... For people that are are picky and want all their books to be the same size, um, and with this particular series, most of my books are mass market, but this particular one in the series is a regular size trade paper pack. Um, that is the Seven Water series by Juliette Marillier, which originally started out as a trilogy, but she since but at some point she wrote more books. Um and what's great about this series is that each book is about a different generation in the family. So, you can get a, like, one, I think it was Jean from Jean's Book of Thought said that you could get away with reading these taking a long time before you get through the series. Um, so, the first book being um, Daughter of the Forest. The second one is about her daughter, um... Let's see if I can get her name. Is her name... Lydan? Lydan? I don't know how to say it. I would have to hear it pronounced. Um, Lydian is the main character's daughter in Daughter of the Forest. Um, so, and this is book two. And like I said, all my books are mass market except for this one. This is not mass market because I got this one at on Amazon and then the rest of the books I um I well I got all the books I've got all the books on Amazon but either um but I think all the other ones I picked mass market editions of them without meaning to and I feel like I need to keep them because some of them were actually gifts from Terry and I feel like I should um keep those editions and read them you know, I mean, there's something wrong with mass markets. It's just I don't like reading mass markets because they're I've learned I've developed a dislike for them because they're small. Even though that was the reason why I liked them, and they were cheap. They're cheap editions. So anyway, I gotta. But funnily enough, even though my mom ordered this one for me on Amazon, it actually is a thrift book purchase. It came from thrift books originally. So, like, Amazon had to get it from there, which is really funny that it originally came from there. Which actually means that I could look for the rest of the books in the series in this size or the books because they would, they probably have them. So, I might do that, you know, um, so that all my books are the same. So, um, anyway. So, there is that one, um, which that is... Okay, the Emperor series is four books. Um, that one is, I don't know how many books. I cannot remember. Let's see if I can if it shows the list of books. Um, there's 14 in the Wheel of Time. And in, fan, in Barshat Sire, there is, I think, maybe like six books in that one. Um, and then, like I said, this one is... Says how many books if it shows nope it does not show it um it doesn't it doesn't thing it doesn't show so I don't know how many I cannot remember but there is more than three now um yeah so So yeah, I don't know how many books are in this series, but there's more than three. 
Okay, so next we have, oh, and this one is like, a, and then Pillars of the Earth, Trump, Kingsbridge, I think, like I said, it's an ongoing series. I think he's still writing more books. Um, I'll have to double check on that, though. Okay, so next we have another ongoing series, which I think has nine books. Oh, dang it. Oh, for some reason, I can never, I cannot make that. I'm not, I don't have that. Well, it has nine books. And that is Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Where is that book at? Um, where is it? Oh, I cannot find it. I brought it over. In, oh, it's right here. Malazan, Book of the Fallen. And this is book two. And what's interesting, this is another series that, like, I feel like each book is a different, um, not exactly... Um, it, I feel like it's kind of like set up like the Barsha set Shire series where it's like each book is like a different with different characters. So actually, you know, a better comparison is probably Seven Water series because each book is with all these different characters. Now this one probably has a more link, a stronger link, um, than the other than Barsha Sire or Seven Waters. Um, this is, I read the first book, Gardens of the Moon. I very much enjoyed it, although I couldn't tell you about it, and I probably, um, would need to reread at some point. And this time, I'm gonna make sure I get better at reviewing this. And, but that's one of the other problems with a mass mark, one of the problems about mass market is it's even smaller spaces, so it's harder to write in the margins. Um, than in the other. I mean, there are some spaces. It's just physically, it's smaller. So, um. But, and this one is longer than Gardens of the Moon. So, I want to, um. And I feel like this is one of those series. And this is obviously one of those series that requires a lot of concentration. But like I said, I'm working on the whole idea of getting better at focusing on books and remembering things a little bit better and taking notes and annotating my books a little bit better so I can remember things better and tell you, like, tell you what books like Gardens of the Moon, what happens in them. Um, but this is another one of those ones where I picked it up and started although actually remembering now i feel like we are with characters from the previous book it's just they moved on gone to a different place so maybe seven waters and barsha set shire is not a good comparison maybe it's still a continuing it's just it takes place in a different place and you some and possibly are with different characters but um yeah so and so, and I don't, like I said, I don't know. I think there are nine books in this series. And then it's really cool. It's just, like, recalling things. And it's a little more, requires a little more understanding and paying attention to figure out what's going on. I mean, sometimes with fantasy books, I just read them and I just get lost in the world. But then afterwards, I can't tell you what's go what happened. Um, at least not coherently. So, this is book two. And then, let's see, after that one, we have one that's four books and looks like an easier book to read um, and get into. And it makes me think a little bit of Musketeer, the Musketeer series, which I'm currently reading. And that is The Great Coats. This was recommended from um, Alan from the Library of Alexandria. He loves the series. Um... And this is the first book. And I like I said, I think there are like four books in it. And it's basically, like I said, you can compare it to, I feel like the plot reminded me of Three Musketeers. Where, um, except for, in this case, the king, their king, it's a, they're a group of, um, you know, protectors to the king. And they, they're soldiers to the king and he ends up getting murdered. And they get disbanded. And it's years later, and there's one of them from, it recalls a, um,
I'm trying to remember. See, he recalls a set of instructions from the king in case of his his death. Um, and he has like he gives them one final mission. So the leader of the Great Coats has to gather his buddies and they have to complete this mission. So like I said, it reminded me a little bit about the three musketeers. Um But I think it's four books, I believe. Let me see if it Although most of the time the first book doesn't list all the books in the series because it's you know, but um it doesn't it doesn't have a list of all the books in the series. I'm sure if I'm you know, it would be in the second book though. Um But there is that. That's another one like it says four books long. And then we have let's see, um and then we have another one that um I heard about from people like Elliot Elia Brooks and Alan from the Library is out Alexandria. And that is um, the Books of Babel. And this is the first book. Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. And this is the first book. Senlin Ascends. And this this guy, our main character, Thomas Senlin, he's just got married. He's kind of a nerd. <laughs> and um, not a typical, not an action hero or anything. And they go to this infamous Tower of Babel, which each level is its whole own world. And he and his wife decide to honeymoon and explore it for their honeymoon. And then he somehow loses her in the process. And he has to go through each level to find her. And I'm sure there's going to be more to it than that. I'm sure there's going to be some evil force who desire, who like maybe desires his wife and wants to marry her or something or you know some evil powerful god wants some god wants to mess with them or something probably something like that i don't know um but this i believe also has like four books four or five books um and oh excuse me excuse me um and so with these, I wanted what I want to do with these series is I want to try to get it out of the habit of buying all the books in the series and just read the first one, and then after I read the first one, if I want to buy books two, three, and four, etc., then I'll buy them. Um, I'll still, you know, so I won't buy them all at once, but I like I said, I just want to, you know, read them slowly and not. Like I said, not buy them, you know, get out of the habit and not buying them all at once. But I think the concept in this one is really cool that, like, they go through this tower and each level in the tower has its own world. Um, and I just, I just think that's really, really cool, especially because, you know, it's like, I, you know, the whole idea, it's very much remind me of, like, Doctor Who, where it's bigger on the inside, it's like, um... That whole idea of it's a whole world within. Um, that that concept is so cool to me, though. That's a, such a cool form of magic or whatever you want to call it, where there's this whole world inside. This outside looks really something that on the outside looks really small, but then you realize it's not that small when you look, you know, when you look inside. Um, so. Yep, that, there is that one. Okay. And then we're on the last one. Um, and that is, let's see. Um, the last one is a sci the one sci-fi on this. And that is Dune. And obviously it's my current read. Um... My current series read, this is, um, it was recently adapted into a movie, and I believe the movie is going to be divided into two parts. It's going to kind of do, what, like, what It did 
where you have part one is the first movie and then second movie covers the rest of the book. Um, and once I finish it, I will be curious to watch it. But I want to finish the book first before I watch the movie. So it might take a while before that happens. But I'm really enjoying it. I mean, although there are some eye-rolling moments. And um, the main character, Paul, just is like... Can you, he? I feel like he's going to be really annoying. Um, and I don't know how many books. I can... I'm not sure. Let me... I'm going to see if it has a list of all the books in the series. Sometimes first books don't, like I said, sometimes first books don't have all the books. Sometimes they do. Okay, so. Okay. So the Dune Chronicles there is Dune, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, Chapter House Dune. Okay. And then he has a lot of spin-off books that are probably like, um, that he works with Kevin J. Anderson, which Brandon Sanderson on his channel, his book, on his YouTube channel interviewed with Kevin, did an interview with Kevin J. Anderson, or a talk. They, like, just were discussing things. I don't remember which, what the topic was, but he has Dune, House of Trades, Dune, House of Harkonnen, Harkonnen. Dune House of Corina, Corina, Renew, uh, oh, Dune the but Butlerian Jihad, Dune the um, Dune the Battle of Corin, The Road to Dune, also by Frank Herbert includes the novel Spice Planet, Hunters of Dune, Sandworms of Dune, Hall of Dune, The Winds of Dune, Sisterhood of Dune, Men Cats of Dune, Navigators of Dune. The Notebooks of Frank Herbert's Dune, Songs of Mudeb Dune, Modib. And I don't know if these are non. There's a lot of books. It's one of those books that, like, um, I feel like he's he's kind of doing what Tolkien. Like, kind of what Tolkien and people, um, people who study Tolkien and, you know, have published his works that basically taking their, like, there's so much more to the world than just the main books or the main series because there's so many, there's, you know, I read all the books, I've not read as in listed off all the books that he's written and they're basically books that are like, it's like, an anthology of the world, like a whole history of the world. And George R. R. Martin is doing that because he's now writing House of Dragons and there's gonna be a TV series. So we have House of Blood and Fire is the first book and then he, he's working on the next one and that one that's another one that I would I would be tempted to buy a paperback copy. But um yeah, which I love I love with fantasy and sci fi offers it if I was more into sci-fi I would include sci-fi authors as well but I'm just kind of trying to get into it um that when they just do so much more with their world like they expand it and add all these other books that have to, that are the history of their world and the lore of their world and other or other people published books about it like I just bought a book on the mythologies of Tolkien I feel like it's kind of like you know I almost feel like you know, we're all scholars of these other worlds. That's why I like to think of it like you're, you're scholars of, like, the world of Dune or scholars of the Middle Earth. That's, that's why I like to think, like, that's how I like to imagine the idea of people just studying these worlds and that as if they were real and just doing the research and, you know, doing, making, writing books about it, exploring it. I just, I just can't help but get the image in my head of like like scholars and studying and you know kind of like what you do in school but it's a school for these fantasy worlds or these sci-fi you know these science fiction worlds um so yeah dune is another series that i'm eager to read and get into it so far i like it i've liked it so far um obviously i mean like i said i'm on page two i'm on page 261 and this 261 you know and this is part the, the second section, book two. 
which is, which I'm wondering, I'm guessing that, or although it's, this is, I don't know if this would be considered the halfway point though. I mean, I'm trying to think of the movie and where, because, um, where it would stop. Yeah, because there's 600 pages, so I guess maybe if there's a part, book three in this one, then maybe that's where it would stop. So, right after book two. But with that, the question is, would that make sense? As far as narrative goes. So, I will read it and find out. And then once I finish it, I will watch the movie. Um, but so yeah, that is, that's the other one. So those are all the longer series I'm excited about and want to continue with or start reading if I haven't started. Um, so there are a lot, like I said, the 500 plus page books are the ones that in the longer series, 500 plus page books that are long, part of longer series is what I stumble on. I mean, like I said, I keep picking up Wave King, getting really into it. And then putting it down and not picking it up. And then come not and having to start over again. I don't want to have to do that again. Because, you know, I've done that twice already. And I don't want to do it a third time. So I need to think about picking it up soon. Um, but I'm also in the middle of reading some classics. I'm kind of in the classics mode. So, um, and I keep saying it's easier said than done. But I keep being like, okay, I'm going to read, you know, a historical fiction and a classic. And, you know, um... A fantasy and a fantasy from a series, but I'm sure you can tell from my um, TBR I did for March and April, I'm still very indecisive. But yeah, I need to consider prioritizing these series, these longer series. Um, but yep, so those are the longer series that I am reading and that I'm excited about. And um, tell me if you are reading any of these series or what other series are you reading there's still a lot more series I didn't include like the Tamarare series I'm finishing up the um the series um the Witcher series the actual books um and then there's the Rift War series as well um and then there's of course the realm of the underlings but i didn't include that one because like with and which mistborn is another one the mistborn series is um and it's all divided up into like little little book i mean it's kind of the way it's to be up is into you know you have this trilogy or this saga or um this trilogy and then you gotta read this trilogy oh you need to read this saga and then this saga it's like those series where kind of like Dragonlance where you had individual series within within the overarching series so that is my series so tell me what are some of yours I would love to know and I hope you're enjoying your reading and if you are reading series, maybe you're getting through the series a lot. I hope you're getting through the series a lot faster than me. But still taking your time to appreciate that. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification below to be notified when you post new videos. And when um, click on the bell notification below if you want to be notified when I post new videos. And I will talk to y'all later. Alright, bye!